Hey, real quick, uh, added uh, five good players today. Uh, I'll go through these guys real quick, starting with uh, Larry Borum uh, from Missouri. Just a versatile, big, powerful guy. Uh, really transformed his body uh, this spring when you look at it. Moves really well on uh, tape for his size. And, you know, he lost a lot of weight um, through the spring process and at his pro day. We thought he moved around really well. Uh, that gives us confidence, really, that his best football is ahead of him. He can play tackle. He can play guard. So there's, there's some versatility with him. Next with uh, uh, Khalil Herbert from uh, running back from Virginia Tech. Explosive, fast, versatile. Um, also provides a lot of value on special teams. That was kind of a theme for us in that area of the draft. Uh, a, a good kick returner. Daz Newsom, uh, uh, receiver, punt returner uh, from North Carolina. Extremely productive slot receiver. Also a good punt returner. Um, we spent a lot of time watching the tape on Diami Brown, and you kept noticing this player too. So again, we're excited about his ability as a punt returner and just a lot of production in that area along with him being a good receiver. Uh, Thomas Graham, uh, corner nickel uh, from Oregon, just versatile corner. He can play outside, he can play inside. You know, he opted out uh, this year, but really stood out in the senior bowl. Uh, we really like his competitiveness, his energy, kind of the spark that he has. Really like his uh, ball skills. And then and last with the uh, Cyrus Tonga, uh, nose tackle, defensive tackle from BYU. Just a powerful run stopper. Gives us a lot of size inside. We love his makeup. He can push the pocket. He's got a knack for uh, batting passes down at the line of scrimmage. When you looked at our whole front board, he really led all that group in batted passes over the last three years. Uh, just a natural fit uh, with our defense with Tonga. And I, and I would just say this, guys, before the, the question, just – Really proud of our scouts and coaches. And you know, I want to mention Josh Lucas and Champ Kelly, Mark Sadowski, Jeff King, all of our college scouts, all of our pro scouts. So much goes into this. Our trainers, our doctors, you know, even you know, Sue Campbell, uh, Carla Suber, who helped us a ton with our interviews. Just really proud of our whole group. You know, really how connected we are. It starts with Matt and I sharing the same vision and all of us being connected and then attacking this together. So. Really excited about this draft class. We're working through free agency as we speak. That's a big part of it. We're excited about where we are on that right now. And uh, yeah, just fired up about this whole thing. So with that, I'll pass it to Matt. Yeah, well, first of all, I'll start off. It's good seeing everybody. Um, it, it's crazy and amazing how uh, all this time that Ryan and his, his personnel, how much time and, and effort they put into to get into this point that we're at right now. And in three days, it, it's over. and. You know, for me, uh, being involved and just kind of seeing everything and and being a part of uh, what we discuss and the, these meetings that we have, there's so much that goes into it. And the appreciation that I have for these guys, um, you know, I was joking with Ryan the other day. I mean, this guy, uh, he, he has not taken a day off for, for like literally six months. I mean, it's not every every day he's in here uh, early in the morning till late at night, just grinding on film, watching tape all his guys communicating with each other. And, you know, we end up getting uh, hopefully seven wonderful players. And the collaboration that he asks for from us, uh, the communication, the, uh, the unity that we have from the coaches is pretty cool. And so we put it all together and we never know how it's gonna go, but this is where we're at. And so I just, uh, I wanna thank those guys as well on the personnel side, Ryan, Joey Lane, et cetera, um, for everything that they do. It's a fun time. and. Uh, here we are. So we know that now it's always about drafting and developing. And we now have drafted and now it's our job as coaches to develop. And I think that's what uh, is, is really neat from my end of it is to be able to uh, really share the moment with our staff and say now now it's our job to, to make sure that we develop these players and, and make our team better. First question, Pat Finley. Matt, if I would have told you three days ago that you would have wound up with the top two picks that you wound up with, what would you have thought? And and you mentioned Ryan working hard, but what's your evaluation of his draft? Yeah, no, well, you never know because uh, there's just so many different ways that these picks could go. Um, I think from my memory of being in this league, I can't remember it being this fascinating of a time, especially in particular that first round, not knowing who's going to take what or do what. And, you know, the Ryan's greatest strength is really 
being able to go through a bunch of what ifs and play different scenarios out. I always joke with them, that, you know, it's similar to when you're in a game, you got to try to, uh, be, you know, the week prior to the game, play out different situations and, and you know, calls that you're going to make and what are you going to do if, in this situation or that situation so you're prepared. And so it was hard to predict what was going to happen, but uh, you all saw what we did and, um, you know, what came from it. And we feel really, really good about it. Um, we're, we're super excited about the players that we got in this entire draft. Uh, and, and now the, the excitement now turns to just a lot of focus and shift to us as coaches and these guys as players to now make it happen, make it work. And that's where I think the commitment to, that we all have to one another is, hey, um, we're in a great spot right now. Let's, let's us as coaches work to their strengths and do everything we can to make this a, a winning football team. Dan Wiederer. Matt, first, can you take us inside that draft room on Thursday night as those 90 minutes are unfolding and, and obviously other people in that room are making calls and just kind of your emotions and your mood and trying to figure out if you were going to get the guy you wanted? Yeah, I, again, the, the emotions are, uh, are, are just, I wish everybody could kind of experience it at one time in their life because it's different. You know, it's a, it's a good different and just not knowing where things are going to go and all these different scenarios that we have and that we plan out, uh, knowing if it's going to come to fruition or not. And, and literally, as you guys can probably guess, I mean, it, it's up until, you know, almost the minute sometimes of whether or not something happens. And uh, again, credit to Ryan and to Joey Lane and uh, just watching them work those, those phones and listen to different opportunities that we could have and different uh, scenarios that play in front of us. And that's where I think for us, um, we work really well together because we try to communicate. And so the, the excitement was there. And, and then, you know, when you're able to get a player um, like Justin Fields in, in the first round, obviously we were uh, super pumped and um, we, we feel like, um, you know, we, we know that when you have a good feeling like that, uh, you can just feel the energy in the room. You can feel the energy from each person. And that's really ultimately what it's all about. You you talk all the time about a touchdown to check down mentality with your quarterbacks. I'm curious your assessment of Justin from the mindset standpoint of that and also just what you think of the, the deep ball he throws, because obviously that's a strength of his. It is a strength of his. And, and maybe with him, we got to go touchdown to touchdown mentality, get some of that, you know, I think that's what, that's where, where that needs to go. And with all of our quarterbacks. So, but I think you're hitting to the point of what one of his strengths is that you see that he does at Ohio state and just so much credit. I want to give credit myself too to, to uh, uh, Ryan day, who, who was just, um, you know, really great uh, in, in the communication part with, with us. Uh, with Ryan and I, and, and then just the, the relationship that we had going back to our playing days. And I just know that he was really well coached at Ohio State. Ryan and I talked about that. And, and now um, it, it's our job to develop him. And I think that's probably the biggest thing uh, that, that we've taken into this thing is there, is, there will be a plan with Justin and, and with, um, with, with Andy. And, and with Nick and, and just how we go about this. And I think that's gonna be very, very important is that we understand it. Now, fortunately for myself, um, Ryan and I have had a bunch of discussions and, and, and just talking through scenarios. And as everybody has talked about, you know, uh, I, was, I, I went through that in 2017. So is it gonna be the same thing? I don't know, but at least we have some, some type of blueprint to at least work off of and, and be able to just kind of use that to start and see where it goes. Kevin Fishbane. Hey, Matt, I, I know you talked about how excited you were to go through the scouting process with these quarterbacks. Can you walk us through maybe when Justin first got on your radar and then being at that pro day, some of the things that really stood out to you, it, it, just how it got to the point where, where he became the guy that you, you kind of coveted? Well, um, you know, it, it's it for myself um, as I was, going through last year just on a on a phone conversation just talking with with uh with coach day at ohio state we were going through a bunch of different players just talking about different guys that he has and and towards the end of it um we you know we we discussed justin and and he brought up um you know he mentioned that man this kid is is absolutely you know he's a generational uh talent and it just stuck with me 
generational player. And, and when you hear that, those, those are strong words, but you understand the respect I have for him and what that means. And so, um, you know, Ryan and I, I, I told that story to Ryan last year. And so we, we've been keeping our, our eye on him as, as all these different positions and players throughout the league. But we get to the point to where we're at here uh, at the end of the season. And Ryan sits down with me and we just talk through where we're at and where we're at moving forward. And we looked at it together like, hey, let, let's go about this and let's evaluate these these quarterbacks as we go through this process. Let's see who, who we like and, and you know, um, you know, how many guys there are, where they're at, what their strengths and weaknesses are. And in the end, you know, um, just for, for Ryan and I to, to just discuss all of this and come up with this decision together that we wanted to do this. That's what's what's really neat is, is that. So um, you guys know, you've seen all the highlights on Justin and his strengths and who he is um, on the field. But I think what everybody is a, will see as he grows as a player in person is who he is um, you know, whether it's in, in meetings um, with you guys, with, with interviews, and then obviously on the grass, what he can do. Adam Hogue. Yeah, Matt, Ryan mentioned to us that you, you talked to Andy on Thursday night. How did that conversation go? And what, what do you feel like is his mentality right now going in? Yeah, you know what, Adam, I had two conversations um, on Thursday. I had one earlier in the day that um, just just catching up with him, seeing how he's doing, but also just ex explaining to him that, you know, there's so many different things that could happen. And, um, you know, I think that that's very important to discuss. Hey, we we don't know even at that time what could go on. Um, and that was great catching up with him. And then when we went ahead and moved up and got Justin uh, later on that evening, I thought it's very important to um, to talk to Andy and just explain where we're at. Uh, every one of you on, on the call, including myself, would probably want the same phone call to know what's going on, why it's going on, where things are at. And Andy is a hell of a person. And um, we've built a great relationship already in the short time that we've been together. And I just got too much respect for him. And that, that's, that's just how we do things around here. And I think that uh, I'm really looking forward to, to seeing him to be the, the best quarterback he can be. And he handled it uh, as a true pro, and he's a he's a complete uh, teammate. He's a great person, um, and that's he's always been that way. So um, that's just kind of where where we're at, and and I appreciate that from him. Larry Mayer, Matt, I just wanted to ask you about Justin Fields as well. What attributes about him as a player excite you the most? And I know you also touched on this in terms of when you found out you were able to get him, but when it was possible and you realized that it was reality, just you personally, what was your reaction? What were you thinking? Yeah, there's a lot of different emotions that go through you. And, and um, again, for Justin, uh, who is he as a player? Well, you know, we can all see that he's a complete quarterback that has uh, in, in a ton of intangibles uh, he's a threat every time he, the football is in his hands as a passer and a runner, but yet he makes really good decisions. He's played in big time moments. He's one of the you know toughest quarterbacks, um, and I've been around a lot, a lot of tough quarterbacks, but he's definitely up there in regards to his experience at the college level, and I think he hangs his hat on that. Um, and as we all grow with him, uh, I think we're going to sense uh, that that he really has a little bit of that it factor to him too, which is, which is neat, you know? And, and so that has to um, come naturally to everybody and, and some, some have it, some don't. And I think that uh, for him, it's going to be exciting for him to just come in here and learn how to be a professional quarterback. Uh, it's not going to happen overnight. He's going to be able to learn from, from great coaches and from great players that are going to be in the same room from him. And he knows that. And I think that's the part of Justin is that he's, he's super mature. Um, he's very focused and, but he's competitive as hell. And sometimes um, that pushes people. And I think it certainly pushes him, but he does it in a respectful way. And he's had a lot of success doing it. Brad Biggs. Hey guys, I was wondering if uh, you each could uh, possibly talk about what, 
the challenges you believe are going to face the defense this coming season? The, the challenges that our defense? Yeah, I mean, you, 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 you weren't able to get a ton through the draft. Everyone knows why you did what you did. You know, with, with the group that Sean's got, as, as you look at it right now, what, what challenges does that unit face? Well, I, I think before Ryan goes, I, I would just say, first of all, I think um, sometimes just the way it goes in the draft, there, there's, there's obviously certain um, ways or, 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 or um, maybe things that Ryan looks for as we discuss things he, he wants to attack and go. And then certain, it goes certain ways, you know, um, and there's things that are in your control, not in your control. But I know this in regards to our roster and what we have defensively, we do feel really, really good about the players that we have really on this entire roster, not just on defense. And so uh, Sean is, has, has done a phenomenal job here in the off season of getting with the coaches and those guys talking schematically with our personnel and our players. Now we have a really good idea who our players are as coaches with going through free agency and the draft. And, and it's our job now to, to put the scheme together and let these guys go play fast. Yeah, Brad, I would add to that, just the, you know, the, the talent that we have on defense and the moves we've made there over the years. And you talked about, you know, Cleo Mack and Eddie Jackson and Hicks and Roquan and Trevathan, and you can go on and on. And, and then I think, you know, some of the moves we made in free agency this year, Brad, helped us a lot leading into this draft with, with Trufon, Angelo Blackson, Atachu, Christian Jones resigning, uh, Gibson was big for us. So I felt like we attacked a lot of that in free agency and it really opened up the draft, truly opened up the draft uh, for best player. And as you know, Brad, you just kind of go the way the board goes sometimes. And, it happened to lean, lean a little bit more offense uh, this year. Adam Johns. Hey, Matt, question for you uh, about that Chiefs plan that you guys had for, for Patrick. I imagine that took some level of patience or, or commitment to patience back then. But I'm curious, like, how much did it actually help you guys in that plan that Alex Smith was there and actually playing well? And then how important is it that maybe – Stay patient here just in case, you know, Andy has some ups and downs this season. No, that's a good question, Adam. Um, you know, we were uh, back back then, I think, in our, our, our fourth fourth or fifth year with Alex. I think it was our fifth year. And um, so it was a little different in, in that fact. But when I when I bring up that example or that blueprint that, that Ryan and I talk about, um, it's more so probably of um, – just the dynamics of the meeting room and how those conversations went um, and, and how the personalities were of Alex and Patrick at the beginning to, and how it ended in the end, um, just the way that year went, how it was at practice, how different reps were, um, you know, and there's just so much that goes into it. And, and so that's a part of the, the blueprint. And, um, but again, you know, you look at a guy like, um, like Andy Dalton and his experience and the, the time he's seen that part is extremely similar to Alex at the same point in their career where they, you know, Andy's seen every de defense made to man. He's watched a lot of tape. He's seen a lot of different schemes that people throw at him. He's been in playoff games. Um, just he's done a lot of things the right way. And so how great is that for a young rookie to come on in and learn from a guy like like him and Nick Foles and and see like there's there's things that he can take from them and really put into his toolbox and use to make him be the greatest quarterback he can possibly be. And and so the timing element of of Justin you know we're, we will know and there's there's observations from all of us as coaches every single day and and um, just like we would tell any quarterback when you come in here, you do everything you can to be the best quarterback you can be, whether it's in the meeting room or whether it's in practice and everything else will take care of itself. And, and all of those guys are going to do it. And then, you know, we just got to decide then when we get to that point, how, how is he developing and, and, and how is everybody doing and really keeping it as honest as possible with all of those guys. And then um, when the time is right, I promise you, every single person will know uh, including Justin, when it's the right time. And uh, that's naturally how, how it happens. How about Nick's role in, mm -hmm. in this, just in, in terms of, you know, you have a Super Bowl winner there, but I, I'm curious, what do you see his 
uh, input being? Like, what do you envision his, his role with Justin being? Extremely valuable. Uh, again, I have a, you guys know, I have a really good relationship with Nick. Nick and I have had some really uh, good conversations, healthy conversations since the end of the season. Uh, Nick is his, his mindset right now. He's in a really, really good place. And all he wants to do is be the best teammate he can be, be, be the best player he can be, support all of us, and we want to support him. So I've been there with – I've seen Nick in a lot of different roles. I've seen how he handles things. Um, and we all know as coaches that um, we're all going to work for each other. There's, there's no selfishness. Uh, we're all here to help the Chicago Bears win a Super Bowl. And we need to do it together. And, and all three of those quarterbacks in that room, Andy, Nick, and Justin, are all unbelievable people, right? And they all have their own experiences, and they're all different, but they're all going to help each other. And then you take that along with our coaching, coaching staff and the coaches that are going to be hands-on with those three guys, with John Filippo and Bill Lazor. And it's a, it's a really, really great environment. Um, for all of those guys. And when you look at a young guy like Justin, um, I've, I've been with, with Flip for a long time and I've watched him develop quarterbacks and I've seen the way that, in, you know, what he does it and how he does it. And I have a ton of belief in him as a position coach slash passing game coordinator. And I have a ton of belief in Bill Lazor uh, with quarterbacks as well. So um, that that's the exciting part for me. That's where there's a lot of trust in this um in this development part, which is so, so big. We need to develop not just uh, Justin, but all of these guys that we just drafted along with every other player that's on this team. Jason Leisure. Matt, I have two questions for you about Justin Fields. One quickly, did you have him in your evaluations? Did you have him above Wilson and uh, Lance? Well, so couple of things, and I've always been this way. I think you guys know it, even dating back to, to 2017. But um, I'm not going to get into any of my uh, any of my my rankings or where we're at. But uh, we, I think that all five of those quarterbacks in that first round are very good quarterbacks. And well, as far as developing Justin, how will how do you find the line? I don't think you've ever coached a quarterback with his skill set, unless I'm wrong. Have you? Well, I would say this: I've coached a lot of different quarterbacks. Um, I started as a young coach in Philadelphia with Donovan McNabb uh, as a quality control coach. I've been with Kevin Cobb. I've been with a rookie in Nick Foles. I've been with Michael Vick. I've been with Alex Smith. I've been with uh, Trent Edwards, you know, I, from my prior time prior to the Bears, right? Uh, Patrick Mahomes, I mean, as a rookie. So, so many different scenarios. They're all different. And that's what makes it so, so much fun is for me to say, okay, here we are. Now it's it's Andy. You got Nick. You got Justin. You got all these guys that are great quarterbacks. And and the development part is how do we uh, put a plan together to get the best of, of all three of those guys. And so that's for me the fun part. And uh, they all have their strengths and weaknesses as we do as coaches. So how do you how do you balance for finding Justin into what you envision as an ideal quarterback? but also maintaining what has gotten him to this point, what has made him so successful and made you guys fall in love with him this week? Yeah, that's, that's really good question. And here's how I'd answer that is part of that process is going to be for us as coaches, the development part with Justin is making sure that, you know, we're get he's getting, um, you know, reps, the repetitions, where is he getting those reps? How is he getting them? Where's the extra work coming in um, the film study? And that's got, we're not, we're not at that part yet as, as a coaching staff, we're going to sit down and now really who, now we know who we have and where they're at. We can sit down and really put together a schedule and a plan of how this is going to get done. And um, that's the part where, again, I think Ryan mentioned this to you guys the other night or other day, uh, the example of some of these college quarterbacks that do a lot of no huddle is they're looking over to their coaches and they're getting signals and signs and all this stuff. They're coming in, they're standing there, they give a knee or they clap their hand or they fake clap their hand and the ball snapped. It's a little different when you get to, to the NFL. And uh, I think he told you the story, but I always remember when Patrick came in in rookie camp and he got in the first huddle and he was never in a huddle before and he started screaming the plays and the defense could hear it on the other side because he never called a huddle, a play call in the huddle before. Those are the little things that we all think we can just get up and do that these kids haven't done. Getting a snap from under center and taking doing different things there. So 
that those small little processes take time. Once we get that, you can play faster and faster. And, and so um, going back to your question, Jason, uh, it, there's going to have to be a really good plan in place to make sure that we can see that development. We have time for a couple more. Mark Potash. Hey, Ryan, I want to circle back to Tevin Jenkins. A uh, couple questions. A lot of tackles drafted in his range become starters as rookies. Um, I'm wondering, is that a fair expectation for Tevin? And also, when you said he could play on the left side, what does that mean for Charles Leno? You know, with the cap situation being what it is, is there some uncertainty about Charles being on the roster come training camp? Yeah, you know, we, we see, um, obviously, we have high expectations for him. He has starting ability. And, and really, with him and Larry, uh, what we liked about both of them, Mark, is they can play both sides. They can play guard. There's just so much versatility. So we went into this draft, and, and Matt and I said it. We looked at the, we looked at the entirety of the draft, and we – looked at the depth of offensive linemen and said, man, if, if we don't, if we don't come away improving our offensive line, then, you know, then, you know, shame on us, you know, and we really thought that we could attack it that way. And it was, it was important for us to do that. So adding Tevin and Larry uh, were, you know, are, are big time additions for us. And, you know, Mark, we'll just let it battle out. But do you see, but, but do you see, um, if you see Tevin as a starter this year, could it be on the left side? It could be it could be anywhere on our offensive line. It could be on either side. Okay. Yeah. Colleen Kane. Hey Matt, I just wanted to ask you about Tevin Jenkins. What do you like about him as a player and as a person? Yeah, well, as a as a player, I, I just I love his uh, playing demeanor. I think that um, we we watched a, a lot of guys uh, on the offensive line as every other position, but speaking with him directly. Uh, I really love the way he run blocks. I thought that that really jumped out to us as we were evaluating him. Um, he, he's, he's stout in pass protection. You love his attitude. I think you guys have got a little bit of a taste of that uh, with who, what his personality is. I mean, how, you, you got you got to um, you know always appreciate a little bit of that with these guys. And um, but he's also willing to to learn. And you know we we have. The ability, Ryan did a really good job of just really the, the, the background and using all of our sources to talk to different people at Oklahoma State to find out more and more of, about Tevin and everything that just kept coming back to us, just talked about the, the toughness of him, his work ethic, um, who he is as a person, both on and off the field, what he is as a teammate. Uh, you, you love who he is as a teammate. He's going to work hard. He knows that Juan is going to just absolutely grind him with teaching him uh, fundamentals and develop him. And so when you, when you, all you got to do is put on the tape and see how he plays and you got to love it. Last one, Hub Arkush. Ryan, I, I hate to do this to you tonight. You guys probably feel like you just went 15 rounds with the champ, but um, clearly there are cap issues. Uh, you got to get these kids signed now. And there's still a lot of good veteran free agents out there. Um, so what are your priorities now? What happens now for you over the next few weeks, month? How do you go about finishing off this roster? Yeah, you know, right now, Hub, you know, we're full speed college free agency right now. It's, I really challenge our scouts on, on making sure we nail that. And that's going on as we speak. So after that, we'll kind of take a deep breath. And there's, you know, there's some things that, you know, Joey and I know that we need to do as we look at our cap and our situation. And, uh, you know, we have plans in place for that. And, and those are kind of the next steps, you know, before we're able to kind of take a deep breath. But and I, I would just say that you make me think of that hub when I when I you talk about our cap is I don't talk about Joey Lane enough and, and the job that he does for us. And, um, you know, I've been with him for almost 20 years now. And when I go through a draft like this with Joey right by my side and he's outstanding with these trades and he spends so much time and effort into it, like he's kind of a under the radar guy for us. It's really big with what we do, really important to our team. Um, so I can't say enough about Joey Lane. So just a quick shout out to him. Just um, real quick to follow up, Ryan, if I can. I, I'm not asking for names, but will you continue to look at street vets as well? Of course. Yeah, there's guys on our board right now uh, that, we're, that we're still looking at. So um, it, it'll, there's got, yeah, the answer to your question, yes. You know, and then there's guys still that we have targeted with other teams that could be potential cuts or potential trades uh, that we're watching closely. Thanks. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, Ryan. We're all set. All right. Take care. Thank you.